It's the John Davidson Show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's the star of our show, John Davidson. Hello. When the television series Star Trek began in 1966, it could hardly be called a major success. Think back. It wasn't until it returned to television in reruns that it swept the country and the world by storm. But the first time out, it was, it was a hit, but it wasn't a kadarong like that. The result was a kind of mania that spawned hundreds of, of publications. Uh, fan clubs, gadgets of all kinds. It was all set off with these words. Space. The final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Its five-year mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. That five-year mission still lives on in the odyssey of not one, but now two motion pictures. And today on our show, we're going to salute Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, with our guests from the Enterprise. The former captain, now Admiral James T. Kirk, William Shatner. <laughs> Mr. Spock, the science officer, half Vulcan, half human, Leonard Nimoy. The cantankerous Dr. Leonard McCoy, also known as Bones DeForest Kelly. The volatile chief engineer Montgomery Scott, better known as Scotty, James Dewin. The lovely communications officer, Ahura, her name is Nichelle Nichols. The man who steered the Enterprise through her journeys, Mr. Chekhov, Walter Koenig, and Dr. Sulu, George Takei. And the newest member of the Star Trek Odyssey is the character of Dr. Carol Marcus, who falls in love with Admiral Kirk. Her name is Bibi Besh. So strap yourself in and join us today for a journey with the cast and crew of the Starship Enterprise to the ends of the universe where we are truly out there on our own.
A day for Star Trek. I, we want to do this show as a tribute to Star Trek for so long. Today is the day, finally. Would you believe there is one actor, Hollywood actor, who is better known worldwide than Robert Redford, Paul Newman, Burt Reynolds, put together? That's true. He's our first guest today. His portrayal of Captain James Kirk, now Admiral Kirk, the television series Star Trek, and the first Star Trek movie has made him an international favorite. Now, with the film Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, he's once again at the helm of the Starship Enterprise, and this time, his life is in grave danger. Watch. Still getting machines up. Trying, sir. John, you're so good. <laughs> I love the way you walk out there. You walk like an athlete, and I saw you as an athlete. <laughs> this man was our leader. I never thought I would have Captain Kirk as our leader. Oh, God. William Shatner was the head of the ABC Battle of the Network Stars team that you saw a couple weeks ago on television. He was our captain. And under his leadership, where did we wind up on the show? Third. <laughs> We were third. You can say that on your last show, sure. Yeah. What went wrong, leader? Well, our men didn't perform too well. No, no, no. I mean, I can't do the whole thing myself, you know. No. And then our women didn't do so well. I did real good. You did really. You're, not only are you, are you a terrific singer, but you're a half a step faster than I am. We had a foot race with John James from, from what show was that from? Uh, John James is on uh, uh, Flamingo Road. A uh, dynasty, dynasty, of course, and uh, of course, of course, and Paul, and the guy from Fall Guy, whose name is, uh, oh no, no, his assistant, and we had a foot race with guys in their twenties, and Bill and I were running down this thing, they they killed us in that, and I ate the next day. I feel I, I, old. Well, you don't look old. Let me let me point that out immediately. You 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 have an old aura about you, but you. <laughs> I didn't think you were sitting that close. <laughs> Does it bother you when I keep oh, saying gosh. Captain Kirk and Admiral Kirk? You no, I wish we could have won the ABC Network uh, Battle of the Network Stars. That bothers me. It Nothing does. else bothers me. You really got into that. You wanted, you're a winner. Well, I wanted to win. Yeah. No less than you, John Davis. Yes, and it's not the money. It's just that you have to win, like yeah. Captain Kirk. All your life long, people are going to be saying, William Shatner, Captain Kirk, Captain Kirk, William Shatner. Does that bother you? Well, if they don't say anything else, it does bother me because they're idiots, obviously. If all they can say is double, 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 double. No, but if they that. say, Captain Kirk, uh, William Shatner, William Shatner, how would you like to have uh, your meal or something? You know, something else added to those names. Do you mind the reference to oh, that character? that? No, I don't mind it. I mean, I played Captain Kirk, didn't I? I think you did mind it years ago. Well... I read an old article about you. You did. Not too old. Uh, <laughs> I, I've made an adjustment over the period of time of people referring to me as Captain Kirk or Admiral Kirk. It's, uh, it's fine. It's, this movie is a terrific movie. The part of Captain Kirk is something uh, you'd, you'd kill to have, you know. Yeah. And so uh, that's what I did. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's what I performed, and so people know me as that. The little scene we saw looks so physical. Were, were you hurt at all making this picture? It looks very violent. Uh, there are lots of times when you lurch into things and you bruise yourself climbing up and down stairs, uh, ladders, and things like that in the fastest manner. You bang yourself around a lot, and oh. fighting with people. Uh, 
Well, uh, you, there, uh, you can get into accidents, which we have. Over do you do your own time. stunts? Well, I do a lot of them. Uh, this uh, uh, new series that I'm doing, uh, T.J. Hooker, I'm doing you, a lot. Have you heard about T.J. Hooker? William Satter is going to be on every week. Well, that's even more physical. And uh, yeah. so there's, a, there's an element of danger, and yet you can't be in too much danger because uh, we were in more danger in Battle of the Network Stars <laughs> than uh, sometimes here because once, a sc you know, just a scratch, and production is over. For yeah, a while. yeah. there is a new interest on the show. Well, you had a lot of romantic interests uh, on the series. I remember each show by those romantic interests. <laughs> yes. Uh, now there there is one main love. Uh, it's Dr. Carol Marcus. She's an astronaut scientist, and she is played by B.B. Besh, and she is a new addition to the Enterprise team, right? Indeed, a beautiful addition. Let's bring her out. Playing Dr. Carol Marcus. Her name is B.B. Besh. Welcome. <laughs> What's it like uh, doing romantic scenes with this man with lipstick all over his face? Oh, Have I got I'm it already? Oh, is, I do that terribly. Is he a good lover on the screen? Oh, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> do you have, like, bedroom scenes uh, in Star Trek II? They don't have bedrooms in space. <laughs> we lie sort of out right on the air. Absolutely. Like, they do it differently in Vacuum space. Vacuum packed. <laughs> You did something right space. because somehow you um, you bring a new element, a surprise person, maybe as a result of lying. Yes, I do. Space. Well, well, <laughs> Captain Kirk and Carol Marcus knew each other a long time ago, yeah. when they were both young, and he was idealistic, and I was idealistic, and I was a scientist, and we had an affair a long time ago. Yes, and we had a son. And uh, the son is all grown up now. Oh, that's how he's introduced. About that high, is <laughs> <laughs> little fella. Yes, and so our relationship gets revived during the course of the picture. Who plays the son? Merritt Buttrick is okay. his name, and right. he's uh, he's about oh. this. Oh, <laughs> he's very young. <laughs> is he? Yeah. How old actually is he? Did you? About twenty. Mm -hmm. About twenty. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. And now Leonard Nimoy in the picture plays... He plays my son, too. He, play, no, <laughs> he plays Mr. Spock. It's the same character we knew from the series? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. After this break, Leonard Nimoy will join our group. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Leonard Nimoy, after this break. something which you all realize as the show goes along. Bill and, B Bill and BB are, are not going to tell us a lot. This is a very, uh, they're not going to give away the plot of the film. You've got to pay your admission and take your chances. Absolutely. You know? But it, what's the relationship with your son? Uh, do, is it a friendly, you're not going to tell us what? Well, there's a relationship, but, you know, it gets it, complicated. Yes, and it changes. They have a very the strange world. relationship, which you, I guess you've got to see the movie. We'll keep saying that all the <laughs> way through. Interesting facts about Spock. He uh, has pointed ears. Uh, he has green blood. Uh, he gets that amorous urge every seven years. <laughs> Which is interesting. Like, and when he does, watch out. Over the years, we've grown to love his incredible character, even though the character himself is incapable of love. And it's due in large part to the talent of our next guest, why we love him so much, because he brings it out. Let's watch him in action, and then you'll meet Leonard Nimoy. Watch. Now, Lieutenant. Lieutenant. Have you ever piloted a starship out of space, Doc? Never, sir. Take her out, Mr. Savick. Aye, sir. Everything there is a first time, Lieutenant. Don't you agree, Admiral? Mm -hmm. Aft thrusters, Mr. Sulu. Aft thrusters. 
would you like for tranquilizer? I had one quarter impulse power. I had one quarter impulse power. Take her out, Mr. Davidson. I think a lot of people think that Pull you are Mr. Spock, Leonard. <laughs> we have seen you do a lot of different I roles. Am, I am. Hosting right. In Search Of and do a lot of other dramatic mission impossible <clears throat> for a while. But Mr. Spock, I think we think of you as that stoic, very uh, almost asexual thing. And that must bug the <laughs> hell out of you. <laughs> Watch out before he kisses you. Right, right. <laughs> do you like that character? Sure, he's a great friend of mine. Yeah? Sure. How many people do you know that have alien friends? <laughs> or how many alien friends do you have? I have one. Have you ever wanted to break out of it and play and, and, and have him have emotion and be less stoic? Well, you know, in all fairness, uh, when we did the, the series, in the 78 episodes, I think he did once. <laughs> oh, he did? A couple of times, yeah. We did an episode, which, which you kind of referred to, an episode called a Mock Time, when Spock was in heat. <laughs> Once every so, what do you like? Well, I said, I said, have the amorous urge. I thought it was a little better way to put it. I mean, when it comes once every seven years, it's heat. <laughs> But to wait, to wait seven years for that. To, were you happy to go back to this role for, for Star Trek II? Yeah, were you I, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it very much. Uh, the first time we did the movie, the first movie we did uh, two years ago, was a little uh, more of a tense kind of come, coming back because we'd been apart as a group for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. But this time, uh, I felt a lot closer to it and a lot more comfortable with it. Yeah. And I enjoyed the making of the film a lot. I think we have a very exciting picture. Could anyone else play Spock sure. in the future? Bill could. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't think anybody else could be Spock. You could. No, yes, I don't think could. so. You put the, your label on that so clearly. Well, I, you, maybe you're right in that sense. I don't know if anybody would want to, but if you're asking if anyone else could, I think the answer probably is yes. Yeah. Is it true that he... What is the question? Does he die in this picture? There's a lot of controversy. I haven't seen the picture. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to tell us whether no, Spock I, dies? Not necessarily. <laughs> not, not necessarily you're going to tell us, or not necessarily does he die? You figure that out. <laughs> This picture is about, this, seriously, this picture is about life and death and life. Oh, uh, okay. It's called a cut. Does he die or doesn't he? He might come back. Just answered your question. Life, death, and life. In other words, he might die, but he comes back to life. Well, not necessarily. <laughs> In science fiction, I would say anything is possible. Yes. Absolutely. Let me talk to you a little bit about science fiction. We have had people talking about UFOs on the show. We had a, a, a doctor who interviewed people and had read their dreams, and they had had UFO experiences. You must get a lot of mail from people talking about extraterrestrial life. You know that our government uh, sends out beams to outer space to try to get some answer from somebody else in space. Nothing comes back. How do you feel about life on other planets? Who told you nothing comes back? Then there's been no answers from outer space. You haven't heard the answers. I check my service every day. <laughs> no, there's they been no told. answers. That's what those years are for. What I'm saying, we've tried every way to contact somebody in the, in the universe. Do you, as, as uh, 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 certainly students of this, have you found any evidence? I, I know people, uh, whatever you want to call them, on this earth today who are alien. You do? Yeah. Who? No, no, Leonard, you're serious. Yes, yeah. You're serious. Uh, yes. A couple of directors. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Come on, I thought I could get to the bottom of this today. A you're producer not gonna... here and there. No. No, really, John, you want me to answer this question in public Do, now you, do you think there's life in outer space? Yes. Many astronauts don't. 
What? I mean, think that it comes to see us. Think that it comes to see us in UFOs. No, no, and wait a minute. You asked him if there was life in outer space. Right, okay, I just sure. changed it midstream. Yeah, well, mid, mid. Uh... Yes, all right. Do you think it comes to see us in UFOs? I don't know. I haven't seen any positive evidence of UFOs. But, but if you ask if I think there is life in outer space, I have to say yes. Yes. We are one planet orbiting this sun in this particular solar system. There are thousands and thousands of suns like ours, yes. and therefore hundreds of thousands, uncountable numbers of planets circling those suns. I think it's silly to believe that only this planet is blessed with some kind of life. I totally agree. Very well put. When we come back, Dr. L Dr. So. Leonard Bones McCoy. <laughs> His real name is DeForest Kelly, right after this. DeForest Kelly has appeared in classic motion pictures like, think back, Gunfight at OK Corral, Rain Tree County, uh, plus numerous television appearances, on, among others, Gunsmoke, Bonanza. Generally a, a bad guy, a villain. However, his most popular success has been the outspoken, somewhat cynical, but thoroughly likable Dr. Leonard Bones McCoy. Find out what the bone stands for when we meet him. His name is DeForest Kelly. Welcome. <laughs> stand for First, you. I wore these glasses because I want to see something. You really but are a good-looking devil. <laughs> what does Bones stand for? Just going right on. What is Bones. Bones. Bones is an old, old country expression for doctor. They used to call him Sawbones. Oh, well, yeah. So, they were going to uh, call him Saw. <laughs> but the, <laughs> that's too so obvious that, for outer that, space. So it's obvious that the captain would pick up on that and call me Bones. So I I say, just, did you make that up on the set, or that's no? It's, I don't remember how I got that. It was either. written in there? Did I you, think maybe Bill threw that in. I don't know. You're always arguing with Mr. <laughs> Spock on the show. You're always saying things like, I'm a doctor, I'm not a. I just like him terribly. That's the reason. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We don't agree on many things. Of course, there's <laughs> a very simple explanation for it. Uh, Spock has no emotions. McCoy does. So we, uh, Bill ends up being the referee between us. And so that's the way yes, that thing yeah. developed. Might Spock change? Is it true that Spock, Spock actually... change? Sp <laughs> to please him? No. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it true that Spock actually writes poetry? or something? What did you tell me? Uh, or is about to write poetry and become emotional and romantic? No? Where did I read that? Sounds like a great idea. I don't know where you read that. No. All right. So he's going to be that same guy. <laughs> is there a love... Thinking back to the original series, the series, Spock never had a love interest, right? Except that one time in seven, seven years. But there were no romantic interests. No, as a matter of fact, there was one episode that was a love story for Spock. It was with uh, Jill Ireland. Really? And it was pretty tough playing the scenes because she's a very attractive and interesting lady who happens to be married to Charlie Bronson. Really? Who was on the set all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Carrying a large stick. But Bones ha had a, uh, a love interest. Did just one? On one. The just yeah. one. So I... Uh, Why not if more? If you think that he was in heat, what, once in seven <laughs> years? Think about my situation. One time. I don't know. The captain was the stud on the show and... Uh, <laughs> Hey, what a guy. He if got you can't it. win at Battle of the Network Stars, you might as well have a lot of things going on. Be an outer space stud. Right. <laughs> he got all the action, but he had to leave them on the planet. That was the thing. Well, maybe that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> planet Hello. hopping. Right? Bye. I have to go now. To go. <laughs> a lot of guys would love an excuse. My ship is waiting. I, you know, I... <laughs> I've heard about Star Trek conventions. I've never been to one or been... T tell me what that is. Well, it's really no more than a gathering of um, several thousand fans who come to see us on these occasions. How did this they... get started? 
I don't know. Someone had a, uh, intended to have a very small gathering of about 200 fans in New York at one time, and I think around 1,000 showed up. So they decided to do it again, and the next time I think 5,000 showed up, and then it <coughs> began to grow. You know, that's Once a year? Well, no, there are any number of them going on. Oh, all over the country? Yeah. And they stay for three or four days? Is that... Yeah, three, about three days. Bibi, have you ever been to one of these? No, I haven't, but I've heard so much about them. I'd love to go on one of these. I'm sorry, yeah. Can't go? <laughs> because a, she wasn't on the original There's a huge one that's going to take place in uh, Houston in June. And uh, when I talked to the fellow last, I think he had something like a... 20,000 advance for it. My All right. goodness. Where in Houston? Because this show will air in June, uh, right after the movies. By the way, Star Trek II premieres June the 4th at a theater near you, <laughs> around the country. Yes. It's going to be held at the Summit. I believe that's the name of the place. At the Summit in Houston? In Houston. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you do with these, Bill? What do you do with these conventions? We dance and sing and play musical instruments. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so don't. Of, no, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Will you guys be Bill there? Bill will tell you. Bill we, will tell you. Yeah? Well, I've gone to uh, about a half a dozen over the years, and um, we sit and talk to the audience, just about like this. Question yeah. and answer. Much more interesting than this, I yeah. think. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, do they know more about the series than you do? Is it trivia time? Well, I don't remember the series at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too busy concentrating on what the next question is here, you know. <laughs> and uh, the plots go out of mind. I don't remember. The, uh, truly, I have no they recollection know the, of They know the dialogue things. verbatim on some yeah. Interesting thing we're going to talk about when we come back. First of all, you'll meet Michelle Nichols and James Doohan. Uh, but the series was a long time ago, and these guys really don't remember that much about working on the series, whereas we see it wait in wait reruns. Minute, wait a minute. That's what Bill said. Well, Bill said that. Well, Leonard I mean, does. He doesn't speak for the rest. I remember everything. Well, let's see after this break if Leonard really does remember. Jill Ireland. Uh, Starship Enterprise was in trouble, what happened? You can bet that Admiral Kirk called on our next guest to help with the rescue. He would use his password, saying, beam me up, Scotty. Actually, he would speak into his wrist, and <laughs> Scotty would say, talk into your arm. Talk into your arm. <laughs> code for, that is code for Chief Engineer Montgomery Scott to assist in the running of the ship, and Commander Uhura, also, remember this, Bill, when you... I don't, didn't know his first name was Montgomery. <laughs> <laughs> you had to read the whole script, not just your part. <laughs> Um, was called on to help, and, and Scotty would do that. Please welcome the talented actors who portrayed these wonderful characters on television and in the films, Nichelle Nichols and James Doohan. <laughs> You portrayed the same characters in the series as on the film. Any difference in the film now as opposed to the series? I've been waiting to do that for years, and I just have to do it one more time. What? Oh. Oh, oh thank you. Uh, what did you say? Oh, so nice. Have you all gotten together? And... Oh. Is it the same character in the film? Do the characters translate exactly? I, I uh... Any changes? In the film as yeah. opposed to the series? Yeah. We've gotten a little older and wiser. Good, because <laughs> Michelle and James have too, right? <laughs> so it works out real good. And we've been uh, we've uh, uh, been promoted in rank. I started out as a young lieutenant, and now I became a lieutenant commander, and now I'm commander. When you first got the role of Uhura, am I saying it right, Uhura? Uhura. Uh, Uhura. Uhura. What is what nationality? It's from Swahili. Is that? It's a Swahili uh, a derivative of Uhuru, which Uhuru. means freedom. Huh. That was a freedom, actually. I don't yes, yeah, it's freedom. But, but a hoorah was much better. It Uhura. sounds like a, a boomerang going through the air. 
Do you, That's what dreaming this is like. It sounds like a yeah. boomerang. Going, going through the air. Yes, yeah, it's a space term. Oh, what, wasn't it? Okay. <laughs> you know, Phil. <laughs> boomerang. When did you last hear a boomerang go through the air? I don't know. Uh, I just thought of that what as a something. Strange picture. That's uh, like me, you know, through the ship. Get it. Yeah. Get it. <laughs> but wasn't this unique? I have a point here. <laughs> it's on here. It's returning like the boomerang. This, wasn't this unique for a woman, a black woman, to have a role on a series? in what year, 63 through 66? When was the show? 66 yes. through 69. Yes. Yeah. It, was it unique? That's what yeah, I'm trying to say. Yeah, there, there, I guess I was the first black in a successful television series, female, in a, in a, in a role of this quality. And yeah, that was a breakthrough. And maybe a role model for black women in our society? It possibly? became that even uh, for, more, for all women. I, got, yeah. I used to get, uh, and still do, uh, fan mail that... Um, spoke of the positive um, image and impact that it had on women's young women's lives mm -hmm. because at that time what was really being said is that you know we don't go boom and blow ourselves all the kingdom come or now or rang yes or a rang boomerang <laughs> uh, that yes. we do make it into the future yes. and women have a place of importance yeah. in that future James your Scottish accent you use on the show Hi. obviously that's not the real way you talk no, I uh, can do just about any accent in the world as soon as I hear it. Who decided to make it Scottish on the show? Well, I, they called me in, they handed me one page of the script, and I did six or seven accents, and they picked the Scottish. But supposing they'd picked uh, some other ethnic group, instead of when uh, Captain Kirk calls down and says, uh, give me warp 12, you know, instead of hearing that, you hear, see. <laughs> You could have gotten coming up, baby. You know? He could have been German, right? Yeah, yeah. Could have, yeah. Oh, he would have been uh, very good fun. He could have been Japanese. Yeah, that's Swedish, though. That's he could have been Swedish. <laughs> yes. And, uh, <laughs> could have been, uh, you know, I, I have a, an audio tape of The Trouble with Tribbles in Japanese, and it sounds like Russian to me. <laughs> yeah, can't understand a word. And you got the tape playing the right way? <laughs> I don't. Oh. <laughs> Sounded like Greek to me. <laughs> Do you have Scotty's temper, James? Is that did you bring that temper to Scotty? Oh, you're damn right I did. <laughs> no, none more of that, lad. <laughs> you just mind your questions. <laughs> I'll was, vouch I mean, the for character that. wasn't written that way. You added that to it, or they picked you because no, you he's, could. No, uh, he's he's pretty close to uh, Jimmy Doohan, who's got a yeah. massive temper. Yeah. Violent. You know. But I'm uh, a sweet guy five seconds later. Yeah. Yeah. Michelle, you've really researched your role by, by going to space centers and really getting into it. You didn't have to do that, right? I didn't research the role uh, indirectly out I mean of Star space. Trek. I mean space. Out of Star Trek, uh, I went to a Chicago convention and uh, five years after the show was canceled and NASA sent a representative to do um, a presentation on the long-range programming of space and that's when I really got interested in 75 yeah. and then I started studying and traveling and in 77 uh, NASA contracted me to recruit the first women and minority astronauts for the space shuttle program. Gee, that's <laughs> yeah, we now have six women. <laughs> Let's talk about astronauts. How many of you would like to be a, an astronaut? We're, oh me. Yeah? Number we are. Yeah. We already are. We're the ones in future Admiral astronauts. Did not, <laughs> Admiral did not raise his hand. No, we've been there. It's, it's cramped. There. He's got, I, was, I was in the space capsule. You lie in a hammock and you eat toothpaste. <laughs> I mean, it's really But nothing. you could go to the moon. Don't you, believe me. Why? <laughs> what are they, have they got a theater there? I mean, what's happening <laughs> on the moon? They, yeah, they could and do it's Shakespeare. it's cold on the dark side. It, yeah. <laughs> so you wouldn't want to be an astronaut. Neither one of you guys. Oh, I would. I would. Yeah. Come I on. definitely. I would. Yeah, I would. See, the well, only. Then why don't you uh, be an astronaut? The only well, guy. I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bill, you're the only one of this whole crew that doesn't want to do it. They're all nuts. <laughs> I think you're a chicken to go into real outer space. You got so it, baby. He hasn't found out. <laughs> so, so far, he hasn't found out if there are any women out there. <laughs> A super space stud. <laughs> Say space. Super. Well, okay, we're going to take another break, and when we come back. Don't forget. Who are we start, bringing out now? Start to, you'll never get. <laughs> the entire else has no room. No, here. no, no. We have Somebody's Mr. Got to leave. We have Mr. Sulu and Mr. Chekhov. Oh, yes. Oh, God. right after this, oh, Star Trek Two. Hey.
yes, uh, two talented actors. Where, where did you go? Come, no, well, okay. Are oh, you making room for I'm our next guest? Making room. Walter Koenig, uh, who is be returning to Star Trek as Chekhov, the Russian. What is he? A scientist on board? Uh, I don't know. Science officer. What's he Science officer. Yeah. No, wait just a minute. And he's going to continue the role that he created. Well, let's get him out here and ask him. And George Takei as the helmsman of the starship USS Enterprise. Please welcome George Takei. Get me out of my job. And, and Walter Koenig, right here. Here they are. You guys look exactly the way you did on the series. You, nobody changes here. Thank you. It's a. Yeah, because, <laughs> it's because I am. We are totally devoid of avarice and malice in our lives. That's it. Really? You're darn right. <laughs> That's wonderful. Isn't that nice? Yeah. <laughs> I wish I'd said that. Wasn't that clever what they said? People. Are those such? What are those? Two girls? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Star She's Trek. Devoid of them. Oh, no. From the beginning. How has Star Trek changed from, from you guys' standpoint? George, I'll ask you this. Or George, I'll ask you this. Yes, I'm George. <laughs> yes, I'm Walter. Right. Uh, uh, you look uh, so much uh, alike. Uh, I don't uh, yes. Uh, uh, other people have had that problem. Yes. Bob Wise had that same problem on how, the Star yes. Trek. The most how has history. it developed, though, George? How have the characters changed? Well, as you said a little bit earlier, yeah. the, we actors who played the characters are a bit more uh, mature. Yeah. And we bring that maturity to the character. Certainly, um, uh, the heaven. times have changed. Thank heaven, yes. <laughs> Has Star Wars affected uh, Star Trek? See what I mean? I think, I Star think Trek there may be. A, Star Wars. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Star Trek probably. We preceded all of those. You know, uh, uh, Space Odyssey uh, 2001 uh, premiered yes. after Star Trek was canceled. Yes. And Star Wars all came. So we'd like to think we were the pioneers. In oh, the, sure. But after, the, after Star Wars came, I think the special effects helped you then when you got around to making the Star Trek films. We actually use um, the Lucas Films uh, special effects house in Marin County for our special effects in this m present yeah. movie. Right, because that was a breakthrough and helped some of the special effects. Walter, how did you get the role of Chekhov? Is that an interesting story? It was interesting to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was one of those fortuitous, <laughs> fortuitous circumstances that every actor hopes for, you know, that, where everything just falls into place. I had had the good fortune of working for the executive producer, Gene Roddenberry, in another series, in a starring role, and for the director, uh, Joe Pevney, in a starring role in another series, and for the casting director in another series. So that my, when my name came up, they all knew who I was. And as a consequence, I was really in competition with only one other actor. And I learned, which is totally unheard of, I learned the same day while I was at the studio, I learned that I had gotten the role. So it was very, very nice. Very easy. That's it should all be it. that painless, right? Yeah. You've all brought things to your characters. Uh, what did you bring to Sulu? Anything specific you could I think? brought it to Sulu, not him. George? <laughs> <laughs> what did you bring to Sulu? He George? brought it to Chekhov. <laughs> 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 George? Well, I brought an Asian face to uh, <laughs> He brought a, a, a Russian accent to check out. No, but you also, in the, a sword fight, I was told, that you changed the sword that was used and therefore broadened the character. Oh, well, you know, the broad suggestion. Sword. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, now <narrow. laughs> <laughs> We made the sword a little downhill, sliver. But... <laughs> <laughs> no, but you used a fencing sword instead of a samurai. Samurai sword. What, what did that mean to you? How did that change Sulu? Well, you know, we're in the 23rd century. And by that time, there would be a lot of uh, intercultural feeding, uh, certainly you know, the fact that uh, Sulu talks the way he does while looking the way he does is uh, uh, a personification of that. And uh, there's no reason why uh, an Asian-looking person should not be uh, uh, interested in, fan uh, in uh, fencing. Uh, I, you know, as an Asian-American actor, am interested Asian in Shakespeare. Asian? Asian and aging, both. Uh, 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 I said maturing, an but... Uh, an aging uh, Asian. Uh, 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 <laughs> if, if George brought that change to his character, haven't you all contributed to Leonard to the ears? He's, Leonard, he's, Leonard he's, a, he's an older, he's an older Japanese of the Japanese persuasion. Have you ever heard a laugh like that? 
Uh, 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 this, this, it's all downhill now. The forest, the forest. On the episode that he used that sword, he almost changed a few genders. And he flirted with me a lot. With the sword. <laughs> with the sword. I remember a line from that episode. I referred to. Uh, Nichelle as fair maiden. What was your answer to that? <laughs> Sorry, and neither. No more. <laughs> <laughs> I must tell you why I'm slightly confused today. We've never before had nine people on this show. <laughs> and it's wonderful, but I'm getting character Sulu and Barker and Boomerang. Boomerang. Like like sardines. Sounds like a boomerang, doesn't it? But okay, let me, uh, Leonard, did, was the ears your idea by any chance? No, did you bring that to no. it? No. No. I'll tell you an interesting thing about that, if we have the time. Do we have about 20 minutes? Hey, <laughs> we, have, uh, we have 20 seconds. No, I'll tell you about the years. Gene Roddenberry wanted a character in the show, constantly present, or frequently present, who reminded us constantly that we were in the future and that interplanetary travel and interaction with, with aliens and Earth people was a fact. Now, when, the, when we did the, um, the pilot uh, and the network uh, sent out the first sales brochures to the potential buyers, sponsors and stations and so forth, and I happened to be on the mailing list and got a copy, I discovered that in the stills, wherever Mr. Spock was in the still photographs, they had airbrushed out the ear tips. And I called Gene and I said, have you seen this? And he said, yeah, isn't that something? I said, what's the reason for that? He explained that somebody in the sales department at the network had decided that nobody would identify with a character with pointed ears, so they'd uh -huh. taken off the ears. Really? Yeah. When did they go back in? Immediately. <laughs> okay, we have to take another pause. Was that we interesting, John? Yes, it was interesting, yeah. Uh, Mildly. No, no. Uh, we're going to take a break and come back. More from Star Trek and more with all our guests right after this. Star Trek 2, June 4th. Say goodbye to everybody. We've talked about the film, but uh, Walter, the, you're really proud of the film. Absolutely. I think this is not only going to be an extraordinary box office smash, and I, I feel you feel that uh, totally. But I think it's going to be a critical, uh, a, crit a great critical uh, experience. I think the, I think we're going to have everybody supporting this film from the. From from the, from all the media as uh, and as well as as well as as well as the uh, as, well as all the fans and I think that uh, and I would just like to say on behalf of everybody. In we have to say goodbye to BB Besh way down in the end. Congratulations on the new addition and to Forrest Kelly. Thank you, John. Thank you for sharing time with us. James Doohan, thank, thank you. you. Michelle Nichols, who has a recording card. You're gonna be recording this fall? I, I just, I have a new single coming out, Beyond Antares and Uhura's Theme. Oh, it's out in June. to broaden the career, wonderful. <laughs> Walt, Walter Koenig, thank you so much for your... <laughs> no, I'm saying, Walter, I got the right. And George, but what about Walter here? Okay. No, George McKay, <laughs> thank you. And uh, William Shatner, thank you for being our leader, and, and Leonard Des Moines, and John Denver. I'll be back uh, tomorrow. <laughs> Goodbye. This is Warren White. Two reputed underworld figures are charged with murder. I'll have details at 6 on Newswatch 10. John Davidson's wardrobe provided by Henry Grethel. Magic Chef makes a refrigerator that delivers ice and water right to your door. Magic Chef gives you more time for good times. Look up to Emerson, where value is a tradition. Emerson ceiling fans, the modern way to add comfort and elegance to any...